There she is, the city beautiful, Chicago, Illinois, where tonight. Comcast Sportsnet presents White Sox Baseball. This is Jose Abreu, Avi Garcia, Melky Cabrera, and the Sox as they get set to butt heads with Matt Holliday and the first place St. Louis Cardinals. Hi, everybody, and welcome. I'm Ken Harrelson with Steve Stone as we get set to bring you the finale of this brief two-game set. In the opener last night, they jumped out to an 8-2 lead. We tried to come back. It was an 8-5 ball game. We just couldn't get there. But one of the bright spots for our Sox the last week and a half has been our new third baseman. Tyler Saladino has done just about everything right, and he can execute. Coming up from the minor leagues, he can bunt. We've seen that. He also is hitting the ball surprisingly well. Not only with base hits, but he's also hit the ball out of the ballpark, and that's been somewhat surprising. He's got a couple of home runs. He's driven in four. He's hit in seven straight after being shut out in his opening debut, and the defense has been outstanding. He can charge the ball. He has good movement to his left. There's not much he can't do, and so far in just eight games, he looks like he's ready for showtime in the major leagues. Well, in that tough four-game series against the Kansas City Royals, only one of our left-handers could beat him. And that was Johnny Danks. And two of the last three times, he's been very good. In fact, against a very tough Royals team, he didn't give up any runs. He only gave up four hits. He walked four, fanned four. But two of the last three starts, he's given up no runs at all. So John's throwing the ball a little bit better. He's keeping the change up down and doing a pretty good job of it. And he'll be opposed by Lance Lynn, who we saw in St. Louis. He's a fastballer and a pretty good one. He threw the ball well against us in St. Louis, although he didn't have his great stuff. Yet his last five starts, he's 4-1, and one, his ERA under 2. So this guy has done a pretty good job, and he's right in the middle of that rotation. This is the best team in baseball at this point, and hopefully tonight we can split this series with him. It's the last time we're going to look at him this year. All right, Wednesday baseball on Comcast Sportsnet is brought to you by DraftKings as our Sox try to avoid being swept by these Redbirds after sweeping them in St. Louis. So sit back, relax, and strap it down. White Sox baseball coming your way.
Art Pie, your Chicago area and Northwest Indiana Lexus dealer who invites you to test drive a Lexus today. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Illinois, through it all. Audi, truth in engineering. Xfinity, your home for the most live sports. And by Toyota. See where Toyota takes you. Test drive one at your Toyota dealer. Toyota, let's go places. Welcome back to beautiful U.S. Cellular Field. It's a gorgeous night for baseball. 79 degrees and it's Illini night. And the Illini proudly wearing the colors this evening. A nice crowd on hand. And let's take a look at how Mike Matheny is going to line up his Cardinals. Colton Wong leading it off, and Randall Gritchick getting in the two spot. Then it's Matt Holliday, Johnny Peralta, Jason Hayward, who's been red hot this month. Yadier Molina, Matt Carpenter, Mark Reynolds, who hit a line drive rocket of a home run last night. And Stephen Piscotti, who's playing in his second Major League game after getting his first Major League hit last night. The defense, and now they'll line up behind Johnny Danks. Melky Cabrera in left field, Adam Eaton in center. Abasil Garcia in right. Tyler Saladino, who's been terrific in his eight games, playing third base. Alexi Ramirez at short. Carlos Sanchez at second. Jose Abreu at first. Tyler Flowers gets a nod behind the plate. And our Lexus pursuing perfection starting pitcher is Johnny Danks. On for his 18th start. He's 5-8. and eight. He's thrown very well in two of his last three starts. His ERA has dropped under five. He's only walked 29 in close to 100 innings. He's given up 14 home runs this year. And the opposition... Hitting 294 against him, but left-handers not hitting much at just 217. The umpires for the game tonight. Mark Ripperger is behind the plate. The crew chief, Brian Onora, is at first. Ben May is at second, and Alan Porter is at third. So, Robin, trying to figure out if he can match the offense and the defense and pitching together, because last night the offense was pretty good, unfortunately. The pitching, not as good as it has been. And Mike Matheny has made the playoffs in each of his last three years, his first three years of managing. This is his fourth year. And with a 577 winning percentage, he's done a whale of a job. So they've thrown the ball around the infield. That means we're ready to play baseball, and I'm ready to turn it over to my play-by-play -play partner, Ken Harrelson. All right, Steve, thank you. And once again, good evening, everyone, and welcome to White Sox Baseball. I am. Comcast Sportsnet, so happy you could join us for the finale of this two game set and this six game homestand. Colton Wall hitting a 272, 10 homers, 38 driven in. And the first pitch of the ball game. Taking for a strike. Colton was 0 for 4 last night, but he is a good looking young player. Got a great set up and a great approach at the plate with that big leg kick. At this stage of Colton's career, he's not going to walk too much. He's a very aggressive hitter. Just 24 walks and 338 at bats. One and two the count. And here at the ballpark, 330 down the left field line, 335 down the right field line, 375 in the gaps, and 400 straightaway center. Broken bat. He'll take it himself. Got way in on Cardinals come in hitting it 258 as a team with a 2.68, a 2.68. Team ERA. Yeah, the batting average doesn't do much for you, although getting Matt Holiday back certainly is going to help him, but that pitching has been spectacular. They play good enough defense. They do get some big hits, but it's tough to score against these guys. Well, when your ERA almost matches your batting average, <laughs> you got some pretty good pitching. Unless you're hitting 380. That's not going to happen. <laughs> no, as a team. You don't want to face those guys. Gritchick hitting at 274, nine homers, 32 driven in. And the count 0 and 2. Cardinals are 26 and 22 on the road. And at home, this is vulgar, 33 and 12. Well, if there is a formula in how to win your division and how to play good, solid baseball, it's 
Certainly dominate at home and win within your division. And against the Central, the Cardinals 25 and 13. By far the best record against the Central of any team in the Central. Here you go. This is how dominant the pitching staff has been. Overall ERA, they're first in the major leagues. Starters ERA, they're first in the major leagues. And they're second in bullpen ERA, saves and home runs allowed. So this staff has been overwhelming, despite the fact that Adam Wainwright, their number one, was lost for the year early in the season. Well, losing is contagious as winning is contagious. Here's Holiday, two for four last night. One of them a grand slam. We saw last night on Little Tapper in the infield, Matt Holiday coming back from a leg injury is not going to extend himself going up the line. So the infield can play a whole lot deeper than they normally would. That change up. Waited back and just flips it out there into left field. So the two out single. You see Holiday. The key here. His foot was down but he kept his hands back. So he was moving forward but keeping your hands back you still get enough to hit the ball and. Matt Holiday is just a good solid hitter. He's been that way for a long time and they really missed him in the six weeks he was gone. Their record won't show that. No, it won't. So here's Peralta, 299. That's the thing about it. When you lose one of your horses like Matt Holiday and you still maintain a terrific record and lead in your division, when he comes back, it's almost like acquiring and making a big trade. It's going to be interesting. Interesting to see what Pittsburgh does with the trading deadline coming up. Well, they've lost a couple of guys in losing Harrison and losing Mercer. That's a huge loss for that team. So you'd have to figure out that they're going to get a bat. They certainly would could use a shortstop, preferably one who could hit. But they are few and far between, and the teams that have them, the real good ones, they're not giving them up. Outfield bunch swung around to the left. Bit of a gap in left center. And we catch a break and the count one and two. Sox after this game will board our charter and head on over to Cleveland for four. And then after that, up to Boston for four. Before returning home, that ball hit hard. That's the base hit. So a little soft single and a hard single. Two on, two out. There's that curveball, and this time it didn't bite low and in like Johnny's has in the last couple of starts. He was a little unhappy with himself. He realized that that far ahead, he probably wanted to bury it in the dirt. He got it too far up, and Peralta, who's been a very good hitter all year, took advantage. Yeah, in Holiday's absence, Peralta really kicked it in. So here's Hayward. At 287, nine homers and 33 driven in. Takes first pitch strike. Now feel straight up, spread out. About equidistant. Good pitch, didn't get it. Had part of the corner. Watch out. Hang loose. They were the free agent after the season, came over from Atlanta. He had a tendency to tie himself up with his hands. They were very close to his body, and he'd had a hard time on the inside pitches, but now he's 
moved him out a bit and he's hit much better much better than the last few years. Two on two out two balls two strikes. St. Louis will have a big decision to make with him because he's been a very big part of this offense giving him the left handed balance they really need with a lot of right handed hitters in that lineup. So the runners will be off. Albeit slowly. With a full count. With that bad wheel at second holiday and Peralta with not good speed. He gone. And that'll be tired of the side. Nothing across, couple of hits, couple left after having to play as the Cardinals, nothing and the good guys coming to bat. Iowa. Let's take a look at how Robin's going to line up our socks for the game this evening. Adam Eaton leading it off with Tyler Saladino in the two spot. Jose Abreu getting third. Melky Cabrera, Abasil Garcia, Adam LaRoche. Alexi Ramirez at shortstop. Tyler Flowers, who in interleague has been close to a one man gang. And Carlos Sanchez rounding it out. The defense and how they'll line up behind Lance Lynn. Piscotti, Gritchick, and Hayward in the outfield with Carpenter, Peralta, Wong, and Reynolds in the infield. Yadier Molina behind the plate. And our Lexus pursuing perfection starting pitcher is Lance Lynn. This is 18th start. He's 7 and 5. His ERA a terrific 279. 111 strikeouts and 113 innings. Just 33 walks. He's a fastball pitcher. And you will see a whole lot of him. Probably more than just about any other starter around. All this year, 15% off speed pitches for the season. 6'5, 240. 28 years old. Out of Marion County, Indiana. And before we show you our picks to click you at home, select yours. 2 0. Oh. In Lynn's first three full seasons, 18 and 7, 15 and 10, and 15 and 10. He's been a terrific pitcher for the Cardinals coming into this year. 21 over 500. Sox come in hitting at 241 with a 3.92 team ERA. And that's going to be over our dugout into the seats.
Full count. Had him over two yesterday. And he's faced Glenn three times. He's over three. Hit him on the fist, pops him up. So with one out, let's check out our picks to click. Jumanji, our director and the crew, well, along with Eaton, along with Mike Leary and the crew. Steve's going with Adam LaRoche and Sparky Seipel, Joe Bonilla, Bernard Young, and all the great folks at United and Atlantic Aviation. We're going to go with Carlos Sanchez. Most of the people take care of us on our flights. Our flight attendants, Jackie Cruz, Tanya Capra, Danielle Corrigan, Elodie Elliott, Carolina Stevens, Julie Seymour, Suzanne Paulicki, and Maria Andrianos. As there's a, if he stays down, he's got himself a hit, but Saladino is out. Two down. The Cardinals were talking about Peralta when they thought about bringing him over. They knew he could hit. And the reputation for years had been that he didn't have the greatest range around. However, they felt with their computer system and the defensive graphics that they used that positioning would make him a whole lot better at shortstop. They figure he'd be 10 to 15 percent better and he's getting to many more ground balls these days. I think that's a product of not only knowing where to set up defensively but knowing your pitchers and can they execute the game plan for years Cal Ripken Jr. didn't have a great range but he set up perfectly and seemed to be in the way of everything hit the shortstop every every time somebody hit a ball it was hit right at him <laughs> he, just, he was in perfect shape and a pitching staff could they could get that game plan and execute it. Abreu, one for five last night, hitting at 284, 14 homers, 47 knocked in. Johnny's always been one of those shortstops with the good hands. He got to it. He made the play. Matt Carpenter way back on the line. And that didn't take long. One, two, three, and after one, no score. directly on Facebook and on air to participate just visit facebook.com slash CSN Chicago and submit your questions now.
Molina, Carpenter, and Reynolds here in the top of the second inning. Yadier, three for five last night, comes in hitting it 284. A couple of homers he's driven in 35. That should be a can of corn for Ivy. Just a reminder as you enjoy a cold one to look forward to Miller time later in the game brought to you by Miller Light. Third baseman Matt Carpenter, two for five last evening, hitting at 259, nine homers, 45 knocked in. That one back. Top of the fourth inning in Detroit. Tigers leading Seattle eight to three. Grand slam home run by Nick Castellanos. And guess what location the pitch was? Down. Down and most likely on the inner portion of the plate. One of these days, they won't understand it. But his swing, if you get it belting up, he's in trouble. You get it belting. Down, you're in trouble. Those A's got him. Two out. Other action. Cleveland beat Milwaukee seven to five. Hard throwing right hander. Austin Adams. Had a chance to listen to some of that game on my drive in today, and I'll tell you what, it's just great to hear Bob Euchre sounding like a young man again after having that little setback. I love you. Love listening to him. He's a very funny guy. Well, you might tie him, but you're not going to beat him. <laughs> he's, he's funny both in real life and on the broadcast. Oh, he's a lot funnier in real life. <laughs> well, He's, he can't be as funny on the <laughs> air. No. <laughs> as he is. I was talking. Because that's tough foul by Mark Reynolds to their skipper, Craig Council. When we were over there playing him, and Uke was standing there, I said, You realize Uke was not a real good hitter. I said he was a very good catcher. I said, but the reason he was on the Milwaukee team is that's popped up. Stay in here. It will. And that'll retire the side. Nice one, two, three inning. And after an inning and a half, still no score.
Milwaukee skipper, and I told him you was a real good catcher. But the reason he was on the team because he was really good with his hands. And back way back in those days, you know, there was a lot of bias in baseball, a lot of prejudice in our society. And what he would do is on the road trips, especially, he would go out with Aaron and those guys, and literally be their bodyguard. Because he was terrific <laughs> with his hands. He was a tough, tough guy. Well, to have gone through what he's gone through in his life, the last probably the last 15 years, you have to be a tough guy because he's had some some challenges health wise. You better believe it. I tell you the last heart procedure he had. They had to call the paramedics in. One of them had to give him mouth to mouth. He said, Hawk, it took me two days to get rid of him. <laughs> That's Uke. Melky. One and two. Melky hitting a 264, almost 36 knocked in. Oh for three. One for seven lifetime against Lynn. Lynn's fastball moves pretty well, especially when he keeps it down. One out. He's not going to trick you. He throws that fastball on the inside part of the plate. It's 94 miles an hour, anywhere from 92 to 94. Might get it up there 95 on occasion, but you pretty much know that it's coming. Here's Avi. 277 homers, 31 driven in. He's going to give him that one. He's going to be tough. Twenty three games old. That one is ninety four. Taking some other scores. Texas beat Colorado 10 8 out in Denver. In 10 innings in Philadelphia, they beat Tampa Bay 5 4. Just got a piece of it. Nasty Nets beat the Mets 4 3. Bryce Harper 2 for 4, hitting 333 on the season. I love the fact that you face Zach Granke, who's in the middle of a historic scoreless streak of 43 plus innings without giving up a run. He said he, he didn't show me a great deal. I mean, he was okay, but you know, eight scoreless innings against him, and he didn't want to give the pitcher any credit. Two down. Well, I don't blame him. I mean, look, he's got to compete against this guy, and there's no sense saying, well, he's, he's unhittable. I mean, you can't really say that if you're a hitter. Everybody has their own approach and philosophy, so to speak, on how to try to be successful. Either hitting or pitching. You had yours, which you developed over the course of, I'm sure, a few seasons. Oh, yeah. And as LaRoche fouls that away, there are some hitters that will give pitchers a lot of credit. And there are a lot of hitters who will give the pitchers no credit. I started off by not giving them credit and wound up the last few years I played before I broke my leg and my ankle. I understood that there were going to be certain nights that Jimmy Jones or Sammy Smith was just a better pitcher than I was hitter that night. 
And I found that was the best way for me to go. More of a calming, confident way to uh, attack it. I don't think you can really reach your potential of hitting in the major leagues until you are able to accept an 0 for 4 and also accept strikeouts. Well, there's, it's going to happen. There's just some nights where you'll run into a pitcher who doesn't give you anything to hit. If he doesn't give you anything to hit, you're probably going to go 0 for 4. Now, a hitter will get frustrated if he gets. Three, four, five pitches to hit and fouls them back or a little tardy on them, whatever the case may be. But there's just some nights where you run into a real hot pitcher and he's throwing the ball exactly where he wants to. And that's popped up. Gritchick makes a catch. So that is six up, six down for the big six five right in. In the top of the third inning. Scotty showed us yesterday that he's got some power. He hit one opposite field, took Avi all the way back on the track. You see 11 home runs, 41 driven in at AAA in Memphis in 87 games. Just off well, he's been consistent with that. Yeah, he gave the same pitch to yeah. Lynn and he gave the pitch to Johnny Danks, and that's, yeah, that's fine. That's fine as right. Change up. Runs well outside. Welcome for Piscotti. This looked like a changeup that Johnny got up, and it was a line drive rocket. Lexi caught it right in the middle of the glove. Fortunately, that wasn't a one hopper. Here's Wong. He grounded out to a Brayu. Watch this leg kick. This is something that youngsters out there, especially if you're having trouble. If you're having trouble, you might want to give it a try.
All he's doing is creating hang time. But if you're going to do that, you got to hit off the fastball. And if you got that hang time and you're hitting off the fastball, all of a sudden you recognize it's a breaking pitch, then you are much, much more able to make an adjustment. As there is the strike and the count three and one. He will turn it loose. That's Johnny's best fastball tonight, 92 miles an hour. He threw it on the outside corner. And Wong was able to stay alive. If you get it in the neighborhood, he's going to be swinging. He gone. Two down. Made a good pitch on him. Three strikeouts for John so far. Just kept that ball up and threw it right by him. Here's Gritchett. Struck out his first at bat. Cardinals, as we mentioned, they travel well. Fouls that back off the top of the screen and back into the seats. I would say they probably travel as well as any team in all of baseball. There's a strike in the count, one and two. They travel well and they turn out unbelievably well in St. Louis. For well, a city that small. 43, yeah, I mean, the city that small to draw what they draw year after year, phenomenal. He gone. One, two, three, and a seven in a row. And Johnny now with four strikeouts. This Chuck Garfine and Luke Stuckmeyer, our Chuck and Luke Stuckmeyer quiz contestants on their Chicago sports trivia knowledge. Now, the best of beer money presented by Coors Light this Sunday at 7 on CSN Chicago. Ramirez, Flowers, and Sanchez, lower third of our order here in the bottom of the third inning. Lance Lynn has retired the first six with a couple of strikeouts. The 
numbers. I love the numbers that you gave on Lynn. Those are very germane to having an approach against him when he throws only 15 percent off speed off pitches. Speed pitches. Yes. I mean, if you gauge your approach and you know that and you gauge your approach to anything but the fastball, shame on you. Well, he's thrown really one good one for a strike that was to LaRoche. Other than that, it's been pretty much fastball all the way. Now, there was a, a good hook, but missed low and away. Doesn't throw many of those. So when he does throw it, it's pretty surprising. Look at Cutter. Two balls, two strikes. Chopping two hopper to fall. And one out. Provide your guests with the ultimate all inclusive White Sox experience in the home plate club or Magellan Scout seats. These two premium seating areas are the best way to entertain your most important clients, employees, friends, or family. For more information, call 312 674 or visit whitesox.com slash premium seating. Yeah, the Cardinals averaging 43,504. They've gone already a million nine hundred fifty seven thousand six hundred ninety one as there's first pitch strike to Tyler. Slow on the way. <laughs> on the outside corner. Two down. Now time for you to tweet your strongest fan photo using hashtag Chicago Data Strong Fan, and you just might see yourself on an upcoming broadcast brought to you by T-Mobile. Only one team is averaging more than the Cardinals, and that's the Dodgers. They're averaging 46,375. Yankees averaging 40,162. Those two cities are a touch larger than St. Louis. Look at this. You can cancel a post game show. Carlos Sanchez. Mark Sparky Seipole. Joe Bonilla. Bernard Young. They're picked to click. This one barely making it over the head of Colton Wong. But over his head, it got. Now what's his name? J.D. Lemieux. Would have made that play. Lemayu from uh, LeMayu. Colorado. Yeah. DJ Lemayu. Was it? Was he six five? He's a big. And that's trouble. That's down into the corner. Carlos really turning it on. Now they're going to have to hold him on the double by Adam Eaton. Mike Leary and the Cruz picked a click. <laughs> Adam looking at the first ball. Off speed pitch looked like a, a two seam fastball that he tried to sink away, but did not get it low enough. Instead of a ground ball, turned into a line drive. But Scotty had to go get it. He got a pretty good arm. As he got this ball back in quickly. Oh. 
So here with two out is Tyler Saladino grounded out to Peralta. Ducks on the pond, two down. Takes first pitch strike. A couple years from now, when he really gets his feet on the ground and he has this set up against him in this situation, he's going to lay down a butt, drive in a run, and beat it out because Carpenter is way back at third. Fed cutter. One and one. Gap out there in right center if he can find. Two and one. Where are you on deck? Made a good pitch right underneath his hands. So a full count. That time he pumped it up a little bit. He got 96 on the inside corner. Olina wanted it away. Then got it inside. And the payoff pitch. That was a good job by Tyler. That ball was a strike. A B pitch, especially on 3 2. A lot of guys are out on this pitch. He was able to just fight it off. Pretty good job of plate cover. That's another souvenir. and his bench coach David Bell the son of our assistant GM Buddy Bell. All right we have a threat can't score and we're into the fourth.
against the fire department. And it's all for a good cause to raise a whole lot of money. And we've got Eric Diaz and Tony Budvitis, the same guys we have every year here. And I just want to know something. Why does the fire department seem to dominate the police department? Yeah, well, Do you mean Tony? like general and everything? Or <laughs> no, 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 just that. in this game. Well, um, I'm going to have to be honest with you. Okay. I think you got the facts wrong. I mean, they've been kind of kicking our butt for a while. For yeah. quite some time? Yeah. I mean, I should probably say, yeah, we've been kicking our butts, but I can't lie because <laughs> we're on TV. But maybe the facts are a little wrong. They've been, they've been getting the best of us for a little bit now. Well, look, the tickets are $5 if purchased prior to the game and $10 if they're purchased at the door. Parking is free. And this is the Chicago Police Department versus the Chicago Fire Department, 16th annual police fire game. And the benefit is the Gold Badge Society for the Fire Department, the Police Memorial Foundation for the Police Department. And it's all for a really good cause, and hopefully the folks will come out and see you guys. But this is a yearly thing. Do you guys, you appear not to be out of shape at this point. So do you guys, uh, do you psych yourself up for this one? Yeah, it's what we wait all year for, you know, and, and we represent all the police and all the fire that don't have the opportunity to make it to the field because, um, you know, we got a lot of people out there that are coaching Little League that are um, helping out in their communities, and this is just our way of, of doing it, our little niche. Well, this is something that is one of the really great things because of where the money goes, all the money that's raised, and we urge everybody out there to stop on by, enjoy it, I mean, $5 isn't a whole lot if you purchase in advance, even $10 if you get it at the door and when you can park for nothing. I think it's, it's a pretty good situation. And how did this thing start? Well, it started 16 years ago. Um, after 9-11, we came and uh, we were fortunate enough for ISFA to uh, invite us here and host a, a charity game for 9-11. And then we kept it here every year and incorporated you know, both of uh, the fallen charities. And it's turned out to be an, an annual thing. And... If you ask anybody who's been here, it really is a steal. It's a, it's a discounted great day for the family, friends. You know, make it the birthday party. Make it the block party. Come on out here for a discount and have a great time. Has anybody actually hit the ball out of this park? Uh, we've had several, and Tony's one of them. Did you really? Jeez. It depends what you ask. Some people say it bounced over, but... That's, yeah. that's of, a long, of, co of course. That's a that's long a way to hit it. Yeah. It was a uh, you know, good pitch, I guess, right? Well, it, it's really a nice thing. And how do the fans that want to go get in touch with you guys? How can you buy the tickets in advance? Well, if you go to um, chicagopolicememorial.org, you can buy tickets online. That's probably the best route to do. Uh, it'll be the quickest route. Um, day five, uh, there'll be ticket sales at the you know at day five. You know, for the fans that show up game day. For the for the fireside too, the website's up cfdgoldbadgesociety.org. You can get tickets now online too. There on the fireside. Well, it's just, it's great to see you, and uh, you can see it, you can see it right there. So that's it for the inning, and guys, we'll see you next year. But in the meantime, have a very successful time this year. Thank great, you very much. much. Thanks for having us. Thanks.
DraftKings. Play daily fantasy baseball on DraftKings for free using promo code SHYSOX. No score. Bottom of the fourth inning, Abreu, Cabrera, and Garcia. Abreu. 0 for 1, went out to center field. And he's got a 2 0 count. Top of the fourth in Kansas City, one nothing Pittsburgh. Ball hit sharply right at Colton Wong. Ladies' night at U.S. Cellular Field will be held on Saturday, August 1st. The White Sox are offering specially priced tickets to all female fans, and the first 500 buyers will also receive a complimentary White Sox wine tumbler. To purchase tickets, visit whitesocks.com slash ladies. Melky struck out his first trip. That's high in center field. Richard. So far, identical line scores as both of these pitchers have been dominating. No runs, two hits, no errors for both teams. Johnny Danks has thrown the ball exceptionally well, as is Lance Lynn. Those two hits by the Cardinals coming in the first inning after two were out. Our two hits coming in the third inning after two were out. Be a strikeout victim in the second. Got to lay off that one. Him up, so we're into the fifth.
0, 0, 2 and 0. They stranded two, we stranded two. Molina, Carpenter, and Reynolds. Yadier went out to Avi in right field. Two and oh. Surprisingly, Molina against left handers has had his problems. A well hit average of only 0.54. Somewhat surprising because he's a pretty good hitter. That puts him near the bottom of all the major league hitters. 0 0.054. And that's surprising. He's a much better hitter than that, but he's scuffled against the lefties. Watch out. Off the end of the bat. A squibber breaks a streak of 10 in a row retired by Danks. That's the third hit, and Johnny made a good pitch. He got him out in front of it, but I think John frustrated that he fell off the mound so much to the third base side that ball went right over the mound and turned into a base hit. Even though Yadier is not fast, he wasn't going to get him on that if he comes up with it. So here is Carpenter grounded out to Abreu. Carpenter looked back and asked Mark Ripperger if it was a strike. Would you ever do that to an umpire? Swing at a pitch and then turn on and ask him if it was a strike? Not in the big leagues. I learned in the minor leagues you don't do that. Yeah. You get a pretty good idea that you might not know the strike zone if you do that a lot. That's exactly why. My managers in the minor leagues told me don't ever do that. I told a lot of umpires you blew it. <laughs> you know the real good ones would tell you you might be right. Well the real good ones would say I blew it. <laughs> That's what they say. I blew it Hawk. Those days are gone. Just got a piece of it. God rest his soul Nestor Shylock. One of the great umpires. He had a reputation that was really justified, never blowing a two-strike pitch. But obviously he did sometimes, you know. And, but he would tell you, next time you came to the plate, Hawk up blew that one. Didn't help your but, batting average, but no, at least but, he told but he you. didn't make it up either. That's why he was a great umpire. Totally different relationship players to umpires today than we grew up with. Two and two the count. He's been trying to get Carpenter to go out of the strike zone. On those low and away cutters and curveballs, but so far, nothing doing. Now, if he throws one about chin high or right underneath his hands, hard high, slow low.
He went for the slow low and he was just able to fight it off. Now face high fastball. Changing his eye level because most of this at bat has been spent down. Probably be the best way to go. One a little lower than he probably would have liked. Carpenter hit it pretty well, but Carlos is right there. Here's the dangerous Mark Reynolds. Just a piece of the zone at the bottom. Two and over the count. Feel bunching him. Made him change directions with the bat. Good pitch. The White Sox are bringing the Grand Old Opry's 90th anniversary celebration to U.S. Cellular Field for Country Music Night and Fireworks presented by Pepsi on Friday, July 31st. All fans are invited to stay for the post-game fireworks show. Purchase tickets today by visiting whitesocks.com slash country or calling 866-SOX-GAME. Steven Piscotti, 24-year-old rookie, made his major league debut last night. He hit the ball hard the first time. Unfortunately, he hit it right at Alexia Short. And that's cool. It's a good thing Yadier is running. They're going to have to hold him. Bobby had a long way to go for it. So that's his first major league extra base hit. Perfect pitcher's pitch, and credit Piscotti for going down and getting it. Sliced it down the line. This ball is out of the strike zone, but he thought it was good enough. Even though he drops it with Molina running, he's not going to even think about scoring. That'll bring up Wong. He's grounded to Abreu, and he has struck out swinging at a fastball. He's dangerous. The first pitch, he's been especially dangerous. He's at five home runs in 44 plate appearances coming into this series on the first pitch. So 
he, to me, he's just fun to watch. Good player who's really improved his defense at second base. That was the only problem he had, and seems to be smoothing that out quite a bit. That's high in the center field. And that'll return the sign. We're halfway home. No score. Adam LaRoche will lead it off. Breaking ball. Curveball strike. Now Carpenter, who is holding his ground, moves out for the shift. On the first base side of second on the grass. Yeah, they figure out he's probably much more likely to push a bunt with no strikes than he is with one. That curveball down low. Adam has faced Lynn nine times, has one hit. That was a little generous. He's been given pitches off the plate. That was a good two seam fastball. It was moving away. But on the Honda pitch tracks, you'll see one that Adam's not going to be able to get to. Two and two. They're trying, got here trying to grab another strike from Ripperger. And the payoff pitch coming up. One out. Hey Sox fans, on Saturday, August 1st, come and see the White Sox take on the Yankees at 610. First 20,000 fans will receive a Scott Posetnik World Series Moment bobblehead presented by Wintrust Community Bank. Purchase your tickets today by visiting whitesox.com or calling 866 Sox Game.
That'll bring up Alexi, who went out to his counterpart, Johnny Peralta. Flips a little breaking ball up there, misses in the count, one and nothing. Chopper sticking in his pocket. No. That was a terrific play because there was no way to do anything with that except That's right. let it go and see what happens. Like he's got to go back and swing again. Carpenter realizing that Lexi's just too fast. And this one is not going to roll into left field one way or the other, so it trickles harmlessly foul. Strikeouts now for the big right hander. And here's Tyler. Tyler struck out his first trip. Over and dry our dugout. Nice crowd on hand. Nice home stand attendance wise. And it was certainly great to enjoy the 2005 celebration. That's a pop up souvenir. That was a wonderful weekend, and the culmination was the Monday Field of Greens golf tournament. I think all of the guys had just a terrific time. I know getting back together again with a team that won the World Series had to be absolutely a thrill for a lot of those guys who probably don't see one another as much as they'd like to. Well, that team was closer than most. Don't get me wrong, there have been some teams that won the World Series that were not particularly close. They just had a ton of talent. That team, because Ozzy was a magician in manufacturing chemistry on that ball club and then letting them go play. He didn't try to micromanage every pitch, every out, every inning, every game. He let them have fun out there. And that's the reason he won 99 games and then went 11 and 1 to win a world championship. Yanks that one foul. Dick Williams did something of the same nature back in 1967 when we won the pennant. And we had the third best team of the four. We had the White Sox, Red Sox, Tigers, and Minnesota. Minnesota really had the best team. Tigers were second. We were third. And the Dick Williams just let us play. As he gets it. And we're into the six, no score.
continue doing the things that you love. Visit Athletico.com and start defining your pain-free inner athlete today. Athletico, the official physical therapy provider of the Chicago White Sox. Athletico, better for everybody. No score here in the top of the sixth inning. Richie, Holiday, and Peralta to face Johnny Danks. Both pitchers have been awfully good through five. Third time through the order, and John has been in control. First ball hunting. Avi. One pitch. One out. Richard now 0 for 3. And there are your pitchers head to head. Johnny with one more out. Giving up two more hits. And Lynn with seven strikeouts to John's four. Neither have walked anybody. Holiday one for two. Got a change up back in the first inning and just one handed it. A little soft single in the left field. Second at bat. One out to left. Count. You bet Mike Matheny has given him the 3 0 green light. I'd be shocked if he did. I pray you, he's good on these. That's the one thing you don't want to do. Hitting three holes fell out to the right side. No, Johnny just beat him with a fastball. And I think this one got in a little too far on Holiday. He was not particularly happy with that 3 0 swing. No, it's there's an arc to hit him for you. And some guys do it very well, and other guys don't do it very well. Managers find out though. And then adjust from there. Broughton. Can I get the change? Johnny had a single to left and he also went out to center. In the National League, D. Gordon leads the hit parade. Then it's Paul Goldschmidt, Joe Panic, and Johnny Peralta. Two out, two balls, two strikes. Reach back. A little giddy up on that one and missed up high for a full count. I said hard, very hard, but very foul. Gone. Pull the string on him up. Beautiful change on 3 2. Five strikeouts now for Johnny. 
DraftKings. Play daily fantasy baseball on DraftKings for free using promo code SHYSOX. It's a nothing to nothing game. Cardinals about hit our Sox 4 to 2. Both pitchers have been dominant. And Carlos Sanchez is going to lead it off. He had a base hit in the third inning. There's a little lady certainly enjoying this one. Carlos came in, has yet to hit his first major league home run. He's driven in 11 runs in the outfield, playing him straight away. That fastball misses up and away. And he fouls that one straight back. Lance Lynn was selected in the supplemental first round, 39th pick overall in June 2008. So he's been a product of this Cardinal organization. He's been a good one for them. Now 23 games over 500 with a lifetime ERA under three and a half. Little Looper, the second hit of the day, and a good way to start off the bottom of the sixth inning. So. Once again, Mark Seipel, Joe Bonilla, Bernard Young, and all the great folks at United and Atlantic Aviation's pick to click. And two for says, two. He's that, got that batting average up to 202. So here's Eaton. Adam one for two, a double back in the third inning. Gap out there in right center. Pretty good move for a big man, especially. One and one to count. Just off the outside corner.
Pass at the top of the zone and accounts three and one. Don't help him out. It's kind of surprising at three and one that Carpenter is still way in on the grass at third base. Borderline pitch and a full count. Athene, who was a gold glove winner four times, giving the signals to Molina. Here we go. That pitch fouled away. Boy, these Cardinals got some big pitchers. 6'4, 6'6, 6'5, 6'4, 6'5, 6'6, 6'7, 6'5. They were put together a volleyball team. They're going to be tough. Man, big and strong. Getting bigger and stronger all the time. And there's ball four, so the first two men aboard. First walk of the ball game. Tyler looking to lay one down. Right here, this would be one of the critical at bats in this ball game. This He's got a couple of seconds. If he gets it down, it puts all kinds of pressure on that Cardinal ball club. Kind of surprising. Mark Reynolds was way back at first base. I think they yelled at him from the dugout to move on in. He's not bunting. And the count nothing in one. Bray you on deck. Melky in the hole. Reynolds now on the grass. Dobbin showing a lot of confidence. In Tyler Saladino. Two and one. You just tuning in, no runs, four hits, no errors for them, no runs, three hits, no errors for us. Not go. So three and one to count. Just back, eaten back. So we just turning in. Three hits we have. Two by Sanchez, one by Eat. We have four hits.
payoff pitch. Yanks that one foul. A very happy young man with a souvenir. A good thing that Peralta fumbled that ball. It would have been tough to turn the double play because Saladino can really run. But it became a moot point as Johnny couldn't get it out of the glove. No, couldn't find the ears on it. It's a lot easier and maybe a chance to turn it if he goes with a hand to the glove. Instead of catching it one handed and having the transfer. Look really strange. Looked like he put the glove almost over his face yeah. over his face before he made the play. We catch a break there. So here is Abreu. Jose is going out to center and he is grounded out hard to second. Tyler 25 for 27 and stolen bases down in Charlotte, but they didn't have Yardi or Molina down there. Tough man to run against, but you can get a pretty decent secondary lead, especially with Carpenter well off the bag at third. There's a base hit. Sanchez will score and it's a one nothing Sox lead. Yes. Javier number 48 and that ball was down on the inner portion and Jose drove it into left field. Sox the first team to break through. Have the lead. That was a good job of hitting that ball hard and keeping it fair. So one out two on first and second and here's Melky. Melky struck out and went out to center field. Checks it up and takes ball one. Two and oh, so he's got the catbird seat. Cardinals bullpen is starting to stir for the first time. Three and oh. Randy Cho. Their left handed specialist throwing in the pen. He's getting ready for Adam LaRoche. Wow. It's not the first one up there he's called. Lynn is starting to get under a lot of his pitches. And Yadier thought it was a ball. 3 1. Base hit in the center field. Here he comes. Here's the throw. He's safe. And it's two nothing sides. RBI number 37. So the guys in the middle have come through with back to back base hits. Still leaving two on, only one out with a two run lead. And Derek Lilliquist is coming out to talk with Lance Lynn. It's Tyler Saladino. 
Rushes at excellent speed. Beats the throw from center field by Plenty. Don't stop now, boys. Here's Avi. Avi's due. He's 0 for 2. Both those strikeouts. Took that pitch nicely. One and oh. Now he's got the catbird seat at two and oh. Zone him in, reel him in, and light him up right here, Avi. Big gap in left side. Two and two. Sakalovich has joined Choke. Yes, he did. Two down. It's up to Adam to keep it going. He's over to a pop up the center and a ground out. To Carpenter, who was out in right field. On the track, but we put a two spot up there. We'll go to the seventh. It is two nothing White Sox.
I love Colin McCorn. Top of the seventh, Hayward, Molina, and Carpenter. First pitch strike. Hayward is struck out and popped up. A good catch to Saladino. This one sounded better than it went. He actually hit it off the end of the bat. When it left the bat, looked like it had a chance, but Avi measuring it all the way. Catches it. He thought it was out of here. Yeah, here. Going out to right and had an infield single. 21 to count. Ball upstairs, a hanger. Hey, Sox fans, check out the Xfinity Fundamentals deck overlooking left field at U.S. Cellular Field. It's accessible from the 100, 300, and 500 levels. Young Sox fans can learn baseball fundamentals from Chicago White Sox training academy coaches. The space features batting and pitching cages, base running areas, and more skill instruction. It's all from Xfinity, your home for the most live sports. That's high in center field, Adam. So Carpenter is retired. Two down. Duke and Patrichka loosening up in the pen. And here comes Robin. Robin with slow walk out. Donnie once again has really, really pitched well. He's going to depart. And he will get a nice ovation. And well deserved. Just a wonderful job by Johnny Danks tonight against baseball's best team as Jake Patrichka will come in as John walks out, gets a standing ovation, tips his hat to the crowd. And we'll step out and be back after these messages.
I do. Want to track the red lines after attending the game? Interested in a seat upgrade? Download MLB.com Baseball, the official U.S. Cellular Field Ballpark app for iPhone and Android smartphones. Visit WhiteSox.com slash baseball app to learn more. Our Honda call to the pen is Jake Petrichka. And with a home run hitter up, Robin wanted to bring in a sinker baller, and that's Jake. On for the 39th time, he's 3-2, three his ERA 327. He's gotten out right-handers better than left-handers, and Johnny Danks with a big smile on his face, and justifiably so, as he was very good once again tonight. That's three of the last four exceptional performances. In that four-game series against Kansas City, if you're just tuning in, he was the only guy to win that game. And he held a very good ball club to zero runs. Want to know the count to Reynolds, who was fouled out to Tyler Flowers and popped up to Alexa. This guy's dangerous. Takes that one to 94. Short lead. Those pitch didn't get it. Two and one. Come on, Jake. Got to make a pitch, buddy. Here's the three one. And there's ball four. That's the first walk issued by our side. Lance Lynn has walked one. Here comes Coop. Well, he does. We'll check some other scores for you. Cleveland beat Milwaukee seven to five. Detroit nine four, leading Seattle. Bottom of the eighth. Kansas City leading Pittsburgh two one. Bottom of the seventh at Kaufman Stadium. So Coop has his say. Houston four, Boston two. That's after six down at the juice box. But right here, two on, two out. We lead it two nothing. Scotty is lined hard to short. Lexi caught that one. And then he had a little soft double down the right field line. Oh, and to the count. The 24 year old rookie.
That's too low. Melky straight away and left. Adam, a couple of steps over towards Avi. And Avi straight away and right, but in a couple of steps. Those lanes got him. Yes, and that'll retire the side. Seventh inning stretch. Two nothing side. fan photo of the game. Tweet your strongest fan photo to hashtag Chicago Data Strong Fan and you just might see yourself in an upcoming broadcast brought to you by T-Mobile. Miguel Sokolovich comes into the game on for the 18th time. He's 3-1 a fine ERA of 183. However, control has been a factor. Nine walks in 19 and two-thirds. So, if the boys are patient, you might put a couple on. Now he was signed by the Red Sox out of Benito Juarez Middle School in Venezuela at the age of 16. Since then, he has pitched in six different organizations White Sox, of course, the Red Sox, Orioles, Cubs, and Mets. So here we go. Here's Alexei. Two nothing good guys. Takes it outside. Now feel for the most part straight up. Bit of a gap out there in right center as there's a strike. Lance Lynn went six, gave up a couple of runs on five hits with a walk and seven strikeouts, but he was outpitched tonight by Johnny Danks. Count evens at two. Yeah. 
Just got a piece of it. Full count. Stocks after the game. Board our charter. One over to Cleveland. Four game series against the Tribe. Finish that. Go up to Boston. For a four game set against the Carmines. And that's out of play right side. In that four game series against Cleveland, we're going to run some Arjun, Quintana, Sale, and Carlos Rodon out there. They're going with Trevor Bauer, Corey Kluber, Carlos Carrasco, and Danny Salazar. Thursday, Friday, and Sunday, it'll be right here on Comcast Sportsnet. And on Saturday, it'll be over WGN. Again, the payoff pitch. That's up the middle and in the center field for a base hit. Didn't hit it hard, but got the job done. Looked almost exactly like the base hit that Molina got earlier. This is another curveball that stays down and over the middle of the plate. Long can't get to it. And a chance for some insurance. Tyler for two, a couple of strikeouts. <laughs> Pulling off that pitch. Tyler's seen this guy before. The game we won in 11 innings in St. Louis, two to one. Tyler, homer off. It's right-handed. Just a line shot, bullet in the left center field. Big gap out there in left center. One out. So here's Carlos Sanchez. He's two for two. Started off that two run six with a single. Came around the score. First and thirty, Charles. Come on, buddy. Pitch out, nothing on. Tonight's game against these Cardinals marks the end of a 19 series stretch. 
for our Sox playing teams with winning records at the time of the matchup. Pull a string had him way off balance. Thirty thousand forty six in attendance. Nice crowd tonight on a line I night at the ballpark. There he goes. That's high in the center field. So he picks up the stolen base. That's his eleventh and fourteen attempts. He got a pretty good jump. This is a good ball to throw for Molina and just makes a bad throw. Lexi gets hung up with the bag as he tries to avoid Peralta coming across and can't get up in time to head to third. Now pick him up, Carlos. In the center field. Get you. We'll get it back in. So two down. <laughs> and here's Adam Eaton. He's one for two. He's popped up to right. He's doubled. That was in the third inning down to the left field corner. And he also walked. Adam got on base three times last night with three walks, scoring two runs. And on base another couple times tonight. Boy, a pickup here would be huge. Takes first pitch strike. Looks like Zach Duke is probably going to come in. Well, they've got the top of the order. Wong, Richard, Holiday. Count even at one. And there's a look at Zach. One and two. Off speed pitch reaches out. Gets hit a couple of places. 28 of our last 37 games have been decided by two runs or less. That's long away two and two. Two things you got to do to be dangerous in September. You got to win close ball games, and you got to play well in your own division. That's out of play.
Another change up. This one misses down and away. Saladino on deck. Now time is called. Change up and a good one. Meanwhile, we're into the eighth of the still a two nothing Sox lead. Light and here's our Miller moments. This is the first one of the ball game as Jose Abreu drives in his 48th. And then Melky takes it right back up the middle. He drives in his 37th, and that's where we stand at 2 to nothing. So a couple of clutch hits. And there's a look at the milkman. So Zach Duke comes into the game. And he's got a two-run lead. On for the 42nd time is ERA 287, 3 and 3 record. And he's got the top of the order to deal with. Colton Wong will lead it off. Randall Gritchett on deck. Matt Holiday in the hole. One into the count. Wong has grounded the first, struck out. And he just missed one, flying pretty deep to center field back in the fifth inning. That was with a couple of guys aboard. And that evens the count. One and one to the youngster. Big gap in left side. Ball hit sharply, but Carlos has got it. One out. Follow the White Sox wherever you are with MLB.com at bat, the number one app for live baseball. At bat is up to the moment at any moment with in game highlights, live look ins, replay previews, radio broadcast, stat cast, and more. Get MLB.com at bat for your smartphone or tablet. Randall Richick is 0 for 3. A couple strikeouts. Pop up to center to check that to right field.
bullpen over the last 10 games. Well, opponents to a 163 average. And there's a base hit, solid base hit in the center field. And now that'll bring Matt Holiday to plate. Representing the tying run. It's going to take Tyler Flowers out to the mound to talk with Zach Duke. Matt Holiday has hit Duke pretty well. 481, 27 at bats. Mark Riverger going out to break it up, and the reason why Tyler went out there is that the bullpen just started to get loose. 481 with two homers and six RBIs. David Robertson. All day is one for three tonight, a real soft single in the left field. And a big hat. Count. Thirty five year old veteran. Four hundred and thirty foot home run last night. With the sacks packed. One and two. Doing pretty good slider, and fortunately, he got it in. Good job by Tyler. And the appeal to Brian Onora, he says, nope, he didn't swing. Came really close. And a nice job of making sure that Gritchick doesn't wind up at second base and you keep the double play in order. It was a ground ball, and Holiday will ground into a double play. Got that leg problem and cannot run. That hit him. So two on. Representing the tying run, Holiday's going to be taken out of the ball game, and this gets him off the right foot. A sweeping slider, well inside. So here's Peralta. He's one for three, a single back in the first inning. Pete Cosma comes on a pinch run. Out in front, chops the foul. Peralta's face that group ten times has three hits.
Big hack in the count one and two. That time he had him well out in front of an off speed slider down. And Jason Hayward in the on deck circle. Give him a big motion and pull the string on the breaking ball again. Watch out. <laughs> One of us got Jose Akendo. He's a lot leaner this year than he was last. He lost over 40 pounds. That makes him a lot more nimble. Former Major League infielder for a long time. Well, what a good player he was. Yes, he was. And a good coach. One out, two on. And once again, the one two pitch. He gone. Two down. He set him up with a steady diet of soft breaking balls and then threw a fastball by him. That's how 88 can look like 96 because he's tardy on his fastball. This guy right here scares me. Jason Hayward. He is 0 for 3 tonight. Strike out a pop up to Saladino and a deep fly to right field. I know in that game back in St. Louis against Chris, Chris Sale, first time up, he just hit a rocket in the center field. He did not give one inch. That is hard to do. You got to tell yourself, keep that right shoulder in, and hope your body obeys. Well, he's faced that dude seven times. He has five hits. Takes that strike. Two six and zero oh for us. Oh six and zero oh for them here in the top of the eighth inning. If you're just joining us, Avi can't get any deeper in right field, or he'd be on the warning track. No, that's the deepest we've seen him play. And he's a little tardy on that one. Put a funny swing. He's going to call catcher interference. No wonder it was a funny swing. There'll be an error on Tyler Flowers, and that load the bases. Take a look at the glove and you can see it right there. The glove folds up. That means that Hayward hit it. So now here comes Robin and. He's going to go with David Robertson. Against one of their best clutch hitters Yadier Molina. All right so Robin's out. Zach Duke is out. Robertson's in. And we'll be back.
set back to New England as they go head to head with a revolution. Now coverage begins at seven. Begins at seven right here on CSN with the Spanish language broadcast available on CSN Plus. Our hand to call to the pen is David Robertson. Off the 37th time, he's four and two, his ERA 2.39, 55 strikeouts in 37 and two thirds innings. He's been 20 of 24 in save opportunities. He inherits the bases loaded, no margin for error. And Yadier, Yadier Molina, who's two for three, stepping in. Time now for our AT&T Universe Multiview. Tying run at Cosme at second, the go-ahead run. Hayward at first. And Molina has five hits in the series so far. That should be enough for him. Well, he's faced Robertson one time, and he is one for one. Checks it up, takes ball one. Bases loaded with Cardinals. Get it. Cosma and Hayward. Count evens at one. Pitch did not get it. This one could have gone either way, just a bit down, and our Toyota pitch tracks will show you exactly where it is. And the count even is at two. Two balls, two strikes, two out. Two nothing socks here in the top of the eighth inning. Going to score three. And Molina in with a triple. 3 2, St. Louis. RBI is 36, 37, and 38. Six hits in the series for Yadier Molina, who is one of the best clutch hitters in baseball. And he took a pitch low and away, a very good pitcher's pitch, took it right down the line, and the Cardinals have the lead for the first time tonight. There's Carpenter. Takes a bunt, takes a strike. Oh, Lordy. <laughs> I went to the count.
they go. Meanwhile, base is clearing triple and they lead it 3 2. Chicago's Facebook page that wanted to ask you from Amy Hudson. She said, Ask, is Mark Burley a Hall of Famer in your book? Sad is happening in Toronto, but great to see him pitching so well this season. I think he's got a chance right now, but we'll see. All right, our Chuck. We got a new pitcher coming in the game, and it's Sam Tuivalala. Converted from a shortstop to a pitcher in 2012. We saw him last night. He's got a very good arm. And there are the numbers on for the ninth time. His ERA down at 208. However, five walks and eight and two thirds. Tyler with the one count. And that evens the count. Tyler coming into the day is at seven and is, is safely in seven of his first eight career games, becoming the first White Sox to accomplish that feat since the big hurt Frank Thomas did it back in 1990. That's a little looper for out number one. It was 98 on the inside part of the plate. He almost threw this one through the bat. The bat cracks. Big fastball for Tui Valala. Here's a break. He's one for three with an RBI. Takes the first pitch strike. What else is going to happen this year? St. Louis going good. You get your breaks. You make your own breaks. They get a catcher's interference. Pow. Three runs. And out of anybody on that team, the last man you want to see come to the plate late with the game on the line is Molina.
Oh, and to the count. To Abreu. That one got the mask of Molina and shook him up. It's a slider. You can see the spin on it. Get to the bottom part of the mask. That was solid. But once again, the 0 2 pitch. Right, the ball hit hard. The foul. You were 50 career home runs. 26 of them have either tied the score or given the Sox the lead. Here's a shot for a base hit. Oh, one out, one on. And here's Melky. That ball is outside. It's a slider off the plate. And Jose in protection mode goes out and gets it. Gets it out. A good part of the bat. He reaches way out to hit this ball hard. He swung it real well tonight. Melky is one for three with an RBI single. That one at 97, an easy 97. That one at 97, two strikes. To the count. The outfield shading him toward left center field. The big gap is in right center. If he can get out ahead, probably won't be able to pull that fastball, but this looks like a breaking ball. Just able to fight it off. Fastball away at 97. That one out of the zone and it leaves it up to Avi. Avi over three tonight, three strikeouts. Pretty consistent with that 97 mile an hour fastball. Except when he gets it up there at 99, which he has gotten it up there over the last couple of nights. Yeah, I, can see, I can see why they converted him from a shortstop. Very, very live arm. That one at 97.
Turn him around. Or take him in the right field. Deep. No, how about this? Flips it out there in the right center field. The Bayou now will make the turn, go into third base. Two out runners at the corners, and here comes Adam. Abby got a slider and flipped it over the head of Wong. So the tying run. Just 90 feet away. And that's going to be it. For Tui Valala. He will leave with. The tying and go ahead runs on base. So with the pitching change, we'll step out and be back after these messages. Join us for the first pitch at six right here on Comcast Sportsnet. Our Honda call to the pen. With the game on the bases. Is Kevin Segrist who actually is better. As you can see better against right handers than he is against left handers left handers hitting 327. And Adam LaRoe steps in. Adam 0 for 3 tonight last time. Way back. Taking Gritchick on the track in center field. Takes first pitch strike. Now he is in the big hole. Oh and two. We'll go to the ninth. It is three two Cardinals.
brought to you by DraftKings. Play daily fantasy baseball on DraftKings for free using promo code SHYSOX. Three seven and zero for the Cardinals. Two eight and one for our Sox here in the top of the ninth inning. It'll be Reynolds, Piscotty, and back to the top of the order with Wong, Bolton Wong. Reynolds over two with a base on balls. Takes low ball one. Has faced David six times, has three hits, one of which stayed in the park. Yanks that one foul. Mark Reynolds wanted that one. That was a curveball that was down, and he had a pretty good swing at it. Neck in. Full count. To the thirty one year old veteran. That slugger category. Very, very small. Walk the last two times up. Only two walks issued. By our pitchers tonight. Johnny Danks was brilliant when six and two thirds, no runs, five hits, no walks, and five strikeouts. So here's Piscotti. A little soft double. In the right field in the fifth inning. That one I think hit Reynolds. I think it was a break that it did. This doesn't hit Reynolds. This probably gets away, and if he was able, he would be going to second base. Right now, he doesn't look like he was able to get to second base. All right, take your time, boys. Back him up. Mark Reynolds is walking a little gingerly on that leg. He's dragging it. He he takes off and then thinks better of it. Right guys in the ninth, lower third of the order. Schedule hitters are Ramirez, Flowers, and Sanchez. So here's Colton Wong. Takes a curveball strike. Trevor Rosenthal getting loosened up. He saved his 28th game last night. They got long listed at five nine. That might be stretching it just a little bit. But he sure is strong.
just turning in. We had two in the sixth. They scored three in the eighth. Bases clearing triple by Yadier Molina as he gone. And we're going to do some damage in the bottom of the ninth. It is the triple by Yadier Molina. Drives it into the corner, unloads the bases. Puts the Cardinals up a run. And there's a look at Molina. As he's getting set to catch their hard throwing right hander, Trevor Rosenthal. On for the 44th time, he's 28 for 30. In saves this year, 45 saves last year, 49 strikeouts, just 15 walks, and 44 and a third. We're going to see JB Shuck come out to hit for Tyler Flowers after Alexi leads it off. Come on, Alexi, start us off right here, buddy. Let's give him a thrill right now. Alexi, one for three tonight. Starts him off with a changeup of all things. Kind of surprising from a guy who throws 97 98. I wanted to trick him. <laughs> he did. He threw it to the screen. Peralta. Nice pick by Reynolds. One out. This is a toughie right here from just tuning in. Finding ways to unusual ways in a lot of cases to lose the ball game. As here is Shuck hitting a 280. DB's been our best pinch hitter by far. Last night Rosenthal gave up a couple of hits. But got out of the inning. One and one to count. He's got five doubles. No homers. Nine RBIs. Four for six and stolen bases. Reynolds. Gonna beat him to the bag for out number two. Carlos 
So it's up to Carlos to keep it going. One and one. Two balls and a strike. Carlos, who is two for three with a run scored, started off our two run sixth with a single. Two balls, two strikes, two out. That was up to 99 as Rosenthal really get it up there. Ball game is over. Tough way to lose this one, Steve. Yeah, not not an easy game to deal with. You seemingly had it in hand. Johnny Danks had just a brilliant night, only to get a no decision. And with the catcher's interference figuring in, you just don't see that very often, but sometimes you invent a way to lose some games. And let's check out our player of the game. It is the veteran all star, Yadier Molina. Two for three to check that three for four tonight with three big RBIs. Our player of the game so far, Steve Stone, for our star producer, Mike Leary, our director, Todd Benjaminson, and our associate producer, Dave Ross. Our terrific technical manager, Mark Harper. Also for the mayor of Mean Joe Group, and Mike Mayer, Frank Amato, Frank Leone, and Doug Bullock. Also the executive producer, Jim Corno Jr. This is a Hawk. So long, everybody. Don't forget to stick around for Post Game Live on CSN Chicago. Chuck and Bill continue to answer your questions on Facebook. Just visit CSN Chicago's Facebook page, submit your questions, and tune in to Post Game to see if they answer them on the air. And you've been watching White Sox baseball right here on Comcast Sportsnet.